Hackers can crack almost any software out there, even the ones boasting top-notch security. It's not magic. Spoiler alert, it's easier than you think, and the tools they use are probably sitting right on their desktop laughing at us. After extensive research on the murky world of software cracking, I've uncovered the exact steps hackers take to break open the programs we all use. Programs like Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and even the latest Call of Duty version. The process begins with the languages these programs are written in, like C++, Java, and Python. These languages are crystal clear for developers, but might as well be a foreign language to your computer. If you're still with me, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. It'll help me more than that extra shot of espresso in my coffee. All right, let's keep going. The moment you download a program and get hit with a paywall, excitement turns to disappointment. It's like being served the perfect meal, only to be told you need to pay extra for the utensils. The temptation to search for a workaround is strong, pushing some to explore the darker corners of the internet. The interesting part lies in how these activation checks work and how some people manage to bypass them. This process isn't about luck. It's a calculated move that starts with understanding how the software is written. Programs are crafted in languages like C++, Java, and Python. Languages that make perfect sense to developers, but are complete gibberish to your computer. To make it understandable, the code gets translated into machine code, which is essentially a mess of one and zero that the computer can process. This translation is known as compilation. Machine code is anything but pretty, resembling a book where every word is replaced with numbers. Once the code is translated into this cryptic machine language, the game of cat and mouse begins. Software activation checks are the first line of defense, designed to keep the program locked up tight unless you've got the golden ticket, your activation key. These checks come in two flavors, online and offline. Online checks are the nosy ones, constantly chatting with the server somewhere in the cloud to verify ownership. Offline checks, on the other hand, are like a complex puzzle, relying on algorithms built right into the software to determine if the key you entered is the real deal. Online activation checks are the software equivalent of a bouncer at a club, constantly in communication with the server to make sure you're on the list. You enter your key and the software sends it, along with your machine's unique ID, off to the server. If the server gives the thumbs up, you're in and the software is activated. No questions asked. Well, unless the key's fake, then you're out of luck. Offline checks are a different beast altogether. These introverted puzzles rely on algorithms embedded within the software itself. When you enter your activation key and email, the software goes to work, running the key through its internal rulebook. These algorithms can be as simple as checking for a pattern or as complex as deciphering cryptographic sequences that make you wish you paid more attention in math class. The more complex the algorithm, the harder it is to crack. But that doesn't stop determined individuals from trying. Now that the software's defenses are set up, enter the crackers, the digital locksmiths who make it their mission to pick those locks. They reverse engineer the whole system, taking the software apart bit by bit to see how it ticks. The tools of the trade include disassemblers and debuggers, which are like x-ray vision and a magnifying glass for code. These allow crackers to peer into the software's inner workings and manipulate its behavior. Crackers approach software like a high-stakes puzzle, using reverse engineering to figure out exactly how to bypass activation mechanisms. Disassemblers are their go-to tool, breaking down the machine code into assembly language, a slightly more readable version of the gibberish that computers understand. This is where they start to see the software structure, identifying the key areas that control activation. Debuggers then come into play, allowing crackers to run the software step by step, pausing to examine what happens under the hood. It's like dissecting a creature, one instruction at a time. The process usually begins with a hunt for strings like invalid key or activation required. These are the signposts that guide the cracker to the critical parts of the code, the ones responsible for the activation check. Once these segments are found, the next step is to figure out how they work. This might involve checking specific bytes, calculating a checksum, or decrypting some data. Understanding the activation process is key to bypassing it. After mapping out the activation process, 
the next step for the cracker is to tweak the code, altering its behavior to bypass the activation check entirely. By modifying just a few critical instructions, crackers can turn the software's own defenses against itself, effectively disabling the need for an activation key. With the activation code in their sights, crackers get to work on modifying the program. This often involves replacing critical instructions with NOPs, or no operation commands. Imagine telling the software, hey, when you get to this part, just do nothing. It's like cutting the wires to a security system. The program skips over the activation check as if it was never there. Another common tactic is changing conditional jumps, which control the flow of the program. By tweaking these jumps, crackers can make the software behave as if a valid key has been entered, no matter what's actually typed in. Once these changes are made, the software behaves like it's fully activated, despite never verifying a legitimate key. The code is then recompiled into a patched version of the software, which can be distributed alongside the original installer. Users replace the original executable with the patched one, and just like that, they have a fully functional, albeit illegal, copy of the software. While crackers are busy breaking down defenses, software developers aren't sitting idly by. They've got their own tricks to make reverse engineering as painful as possible, turning the code into a twisted labyrinth that's nearly impossible to navigate. Code obfuscation is one of the key tactics developers use deliberately making the code look like a jumbled mess of spaghetti to throw off anyone trying to pick it apart. Developers know their software will be a target, so they prepare for the onslaught by employing techniques like code obfuscation. This involves taking the clean, readable code and twisting it into something that looks like it was written by a drunk octopus. The goal is to make reverse engineering a nightmare. Even if a cracker manages to disassemble the code, they'll be faced with a tangled mess that's almost impossible to understand. It's like trying to solve a maze where the walls keep shifting. In addition to obfuscation, developers use anti-debugging techniques to detect when their software is being scrutinized by tools like debuggers. If the software senses it's being watched, it can alter its behavior, crashing, refusing to run, or even launching countermeasures to protect itself. It's a digital cat and mouse game, with each side constantly trying to outmaneuver the other. Even if a cracker manages to bypass these defenses, the end result might be a program that's riddled with bugs, or worse, compromised with hidden malware. Even as developers ramp up their defenses, crackers continue to evolve their techniques, always looking for new ways to slip through the cracks. One of the most sophisticated tactics employed by crackers is the creation of key generators, or key gens, which can produce valid serial keys without needing to actually purchase the software. Key gens are the digital equivalent of forging a signature. Except instead of a pen and paper, you're using code to trick the software into thinking it's been properly activated. After reverse engineering the software's key validation algorithm, crackers replicate this process in a standalone program. This program, the KeyGen, generates serial keys that the software accepts as legitimate. It's like crafting counterfeit money that's good enough to fool the bank. But pulling this off isn't easy. The cracker needs to completely understand the software's algorithm, which often involves cryptographic techniques and complex mathematical operations. Once the key gen is created, it can be distributed widely, allowing anyone with a copy to generate a seemingly valid key. However, using these keys doesn't come without risks. Even a well-crafted key gen can't guarantee that the software will work flawlessly. Software updates can render the keys useless. Or worse, the cracked software could contain hidden threats like malware. Cracked software is a ticking time bomb loaded with malware, bugs, and no support. Using cracked software might save you some cash up front but it opens the door to a world of trouble. No updates, no support, and a high chance of malware turning your device into a playground for hackers. In the end, the risks far outweigh the reward. The smartest move? Stick with legit software and keep your digital life safe. Or not. Here was John from Briefiology. Until next time, remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably comes with a side of malware. If you learned something from the video, hit that like button and subscribe. It's quicker than trying to crack Photoshop.